In the research methods section of the exam, you'll be given a stimulus and most of the questions will relate to the stimulus. So as you're reading through, you should be writing on the exam paper just some little notes to give yourself clues about what might come up in the paper. If you pause the video now and read through the stimulus, and you might be able to make some notes already um, and then restart the video. The first thing to underline is where it says following previous research, because this is a clue that we should use a directional hypothesis. Because there's been previous research, we can make a prediction about the results. Then I would underline where it talks about the participants dancing on a dance mat to music. I would put down ethics because the BPS guidelines say that you should protect your participants from physical harm, and so this is something to be mindful of. Then I would underline where it says the psychologist put posters about the experiment in the staff rooms of three different high schools and sent an email to all teaching staff inviting them to take part. This tells me it's a volunteer sample. A strength of a volunteer sample is that it's ethical because people have chosen to take part. However, a limitation is that you end up with a biased sample because only a certain type of person will be motivated to apply to be in it. Then it says that participants either did condition A, where they were required to play the dance game for 30 minutes per day for two weeks, or condition B, where they would not play the dance game. So that's giving us our independent variables. That's the thing that changes. Either they're going to play the dance game or they're not. I would also make a note that this is the task. Because when you're looking at the task, then you need to see how you can control it to eliminate extraneous variables. So if a question did come up about extraneous variables, you need to look back at the task and see what could be uh, made the same for everybody to make sure that it is the IV causing the difference to the dependent variable. And then I would note about the fact that participants were randomly assigned to either condition A or condition B, because that's telling me it's a control measure. When, when a participant only does one condition of the IV, they should be randomly allocated to spread the participant variables equally and fairly across the conditions of the independent variable. It also tells me that the experimenter is using an independent group's design because participants are only doing one condition of the IV. Now that I know the independent variables, I'm looking for the dependent variable and I can see that the psychologist has measured it in a very simple way by the participants rating themselves on a mood score of 1 to 10. And so the psychologist has calculated the mean mood score for each group. So the dependent variable is the mean mood score. I would also make note of the fact that the psychologist has used the mean as their measure of central tendency. And I would note that a strength of the mean is that it is the most sensitive measure of central tendency because it uses all the data. However, a limitation of using the mean is that it can be easily distorted by extreme scores, or we sometimes call those anomalies or outliers. I would make a note of the level of measurement. So the mood score gives us ordinal data because we rate ourselves out of happiness on a scale of 1 to 10, but there's no specific unit of measurement for how happy you are. I might be an 8 out of 10 and you might be a 9 out of 10, but I don't know how much happier you are than me if you're a 9 out of 10. We now have all the information we need to know which inferential stats test to choose to test for significance. So we know we've got ordinal data, we know it's a test of difference, which means an experiment. We're looking at the difference in mood of people who play on a dance mat and those who don't. And we know it's an independent group's design. So if you pause the video, you can work out which stats test it is before I tell you. So I'm hoping you got that it was a Man Whitney U test. If you've made notes on the exam paper, then it should help you feel more confident when answering some of the questions in the exam. However, please be aware there could be many research methods questions from the spec that come up. For example, what are the implications of the investigation to the economy? Or a question on peer review. If you would like to try the exam paper for the stimulus in this video, then you can click on the link in the description below and there's a mark scheme as well. If you're one of my students, you can just download it on Moodle or send me an email and I will send it to you.